welcome to another video on the channel. Yes, I'm finally making another video. Um, and in this video, we're going to be going over everything I've read this month. Um, this is sort of a new series on the channel, and I hope you enjoy it. Um, I got a request to do more book review type stuff um, on the channel, so welcome to my first kind of book review thing. Um, if you want book reviews content exclusively, like outside of the YouTube sphere, um, I also have a Goodreads. All you have to do is search my name and it will pop up. I also have an Instagram at Writing with Cass where I talk about more bookish writing stuff too if you want exclusive writing stuff on there. Um, but with that all the way, let's get into it. Also, sorry, <laughs> my hand might be a little stained because I dyed my hair uh, yesterday. So, <laughs> sorry if this is uh, distracting to you. But anyway, so um, I'm going to kind of start this off with a little bit of self promo first about like the first thing I like read. Um, I don't know why I'm doing this. Read this year is actually going to be an anthology that I'm in. I'm going to put the picture here or here somewhere. Um, it's called Horoscope, a Zodiac anthology and I am in it. Um, it's just a bunch of short stories and poems by a bunch of different independent horror authors. Um, we all kind of collectively did this together via Instagram. Um, it is edited by Harriet Everend, um, who I will also be talking about later in this video. And, um, yeah, so that's the first book I read because I was a part of it and it's got some really good stories, um, by other authors too. Mine is a short story revolving around the sign of cancer as I am a cancer. Um, if anyone's curious, my big three, um, I am a cancer son. Libra Rising and Taurus Moon. And so yeah, just in case anybody was curious. Um, I obviously would encourage you guys all to read this too, but it's not quite out yet. It will be launched on February 20th, um, but you could do pre-orders on Amazon right now, I believe. Okay, so the second two books I read, um, I don't know where they are. <laughs> They're not on my bookshelf. I thought I put them there. Um, so I'm just going to also put pictures of the books as I talk about them on here. And they're not like conventional books, they're cooking books. Um, fun fact about me, I enjoy cooking a lot and I like to practice new recipes and want to get better at cooking. Um, because for me, food is magical, which kind of is like a caveat into the book. So this book I read is called The Natural Witch's Cookbook, 100 Magical Healing Recipes and Herbal Remedies to Nourish Body, Mind, and Spirit. Um, I rated this on Goodreads like I think a 3 out of 5. I don't normally do the, I mean, I think it's standard to do the 5 star kind of ratings, but I want to talk about this a little bit more like holistically than just the flat out rating. Um, first of all, I... I enjoyed this read and I think it does have a lot of interesting recipes in it. Um, the one I tried out that I thought was like super successful um, was the winter healing chicken. <laughs> and um, like at the time, my husband and I both were suffering from some pretty bad colds. And I tell you what, like as soon as I made this and we ate this, like five to ten minutes into dinner, we our sinuses were just pouring out like boogers everywhere. It totally, totally drained us of the gunk. Um, and so much so that even my husband who's like skeptical about he, he's so weird sometimes he'll be like super into like spooky spooky spirituality stuff and then he'll be like the next day he's like the world's biggest critic but it even made him be like okay whoa this is legit like this is this is a vitality spell or whatever just because of how effective it was for us um it was basically a recipe that involved a lot of like lemons um garlic um ginger and onions, I think. I think that was the reason for all the nasal cleaning, just because those things together tend to have that kind of um, effect on people. But um, I, there's a recipe I am probably going to make this week that also is more of like an aphrodisiac type recipe, I think, um, with asparagus and raspberry sauce. So I'm going to try that too and let you guys know how it goes. Um, but for the most part, what, from what I've tried with the book, it's been effective. Um, the only thing, my only criticism of this book is actually like two things. So, um, one, I think the recipes are a little repetitive. I think they make use of the same sorts of ingredients over and over again. Um, so the way it's broken up, it's like, you know, they divide each type of food into an element. So like vegetables are earth, fish is water, 
birds are air and like uh regular meat like uh cows and pork and stuff is fire um so the protein will be different but then the additives are the same so like if there's like a love thing it's going to be either chocolate or beets right um if it's like a healing thing it's utilizing the same ingredients and i was just, i just would have liked to see a little bit more variety i think um, they also had recipes for, like, desserts and, like, potions and, like, beauty things as well, which I think are interesting. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to try them just yet, but we'll see. Um, again, I'm not knocking it for the effectiveness. I just don't think there was enough variety. And also, um, I understand that the person who wrote this book, um, ha unfortunately had some serious health complications and tried for a long time to find medicine that worked for them, but I don't... I don't remember the exact story, um, but the author claims that they didn't find anything that worked through traditional medicine, and they turned to these recipes as an alter alternative way to heal their body. Um, I can appreciate someone's lived experience, but like I would just be weary because um, sometimes the like holistic healing can kind of lead you lead you down this weird pipeline of like anti science and anti medicine. Um, which I don't think people should go to. Like, I think, you know, if you need medicine that's from a doctor, you should probably take it. Um, but I also think you can supplement things with eating right, you know, um, because I'm definitely not one of those people that are like, oh yeah, if you eat like more, I don't know what it is. If you eat more chocolate or whatever, your depression's going to go away. No. <laughs> um, but you know, there's certain things you can do in terms of wellness and health that like could alleviate some symptoms. Um. So yeah, that, that's my only caveat too with this book is that sometimes I use wording or language that kind of deviates to like the anti-traditional uh, medicine stuff. And I'm just like, mm, I don't know if I like that. So, but again, to each their own. And then the second book, uh, cookbook I got, I got this for Christmas and I kind of just read through it real quick. It's called Wicked Good Pancakes, Insanely Delicious Savory and Sweet Pancake Recipes. Um, easy baking cookbook number nine. I got this for my mom because she got us like a pancake skillet that we couldn't even take back with us because we live in different states. Uh, so, um, yeah, I read through it and like they had good recipes in there, lots of different recipes for pancakes, but I was just disappointed because, um, there wasn't any pictures in the book. I think I rated it like a three out of five. So it's just kind of hard to see like what it's supposed to look like if you don't have any pictures or descriptions. Um, again, like, that's not to critique the, the, like, crafting of the words or anything like that. It's just, like, the, it's more of, like, an organizational thing for me. I'm, like, a visual learner, so I'd like to see what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, but yeah, if you're into, like, a pancakes especially, like, I think this would be a really good book for you. I think they have a lot of variety, um, sweet and savory and stuff, so it was pretty good. So, now we're into, like, book books, and I, and I apologize if you've been like waiting for this part, but um, this month, <coughs> excuse me, this month I finished The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho, and um, I've been meaning to read this for the longest time, um, and like low key, like when Douglas and I got married, we actually quoted this book, and I haven't, I didn't read it, but I liked the quote, so that's like kind of sketchy of me, um, <laughs> but what is the truth? Um, this is probably one of the most famous books for, like, Brazilian authors, I think, or, like, internationally recognized for Brazilian authors. I think it really, um, picked up pace a couple decades ago, I think, because, like, all these, like, celebrity people were, like, quoting it or whatever. Um, it's okay. It's good. It's a very quick read. There's, like, no chapters. Uh, so there's, I mean, they have, like, page breaks, right? They have, like, this. So there's an occasional design or, like, image. Um, but there's no chapter breaks. So that's something to be wary of. Like, I don't know if that's a pro or con for people, but like it's a very, very quick read. Um, the way I rated this a three out of five too. Um, but like for me, the reason why I took off stars was because this is basically just like a self help book disguised as fiction. Um, and I'm not really into self help books necessarily. Like I've been reading some psychology books books to try to help with my own issues for myself but that's from like a very scientific lens right I don't want people to give me advice <laughs> um I want to do things that I want to see things that are grounded in 
analysis and science. Um, but the, I think that's me. I don't know. I have this weird duality or like because I went to grad school and I know what like proper experimentation looks like, like that's important to me. But also I'm a person that I think um, ha is innately spiritual to some degree. So I don't know what that means. But basically, this is a self-help book. So if you like that, great. I think um, the two messages you can really take away from this without any spoilers is like, it's about the journey, not the destination, which I 100% agree with. I mean, the destination would be nice. It would be nice if like we could all be like millionaires and earn a bunch of money, right? But it's like the lessons you learn along the way that tend to be more fruitful for you. So I agree with that. Um, but the second one is a lot about like manifestation and tapping into like the reality of the universe. And while I agree, I think your attitude and outlook on life really affects the way you live it. Um, I also think that we should put a little caveat sometimes with like manifestation because I mean, some people are born into certain circumstances that make their lives a lot harder than the average person. Um, so telling them that like they're just not believing in themselves hard enough to get out of their problems comes from like a place of privilege. <laughs> um, so yes, but I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, it pulls on classical story themes, I think. Um, I, I told Douglas he should read this because I think he would like it. Um, and I think this is more up his alley than me necessarily, but it's a classic. I wanted to check it out. So there's that. Okay. And the last story, again, I don't have a physical copy on here because I read it on an ebook for like the first time ever. Um, so before I was trying to read it on my phone, like with the Kindle app and it was just not working for me, period. Like it wasn't the book's fault at all. It was me and like the fact that I didn't want to like stare <laughs> at my screen any longer than I had to, like outside of working. So, um, basically I finished this book, Curse Legacy by Harriet Everend, who was the person who put together that anthology for us that I mentioned in the very, very beginning. Um, I started this last year and I've been, haven't gotten through it <laughs> until now. Um, once I got my Kindle, Doug's got me a Kindle as like a, a nice surprise gift to try to help with like work. Cause you know, people are sending me their books sometimes and they're sending me free copies and they do it digitally. And I just haven't gotten to any of them because I don't want to read on my phone. And that's really doing a disservice to both parties in general. So, um, yeah, I don't want to do that anymore at all. But, um, so anyway, so I finished that and once I got the Kindle, it was so much easier to read, truthfully, and I think I comprehended the book a lot better in hindsight the later half. Um, so I rated this like a three and a half, but I rounded it up to four. Um, and I think like that was a similar rating to what she gave me when she read my stuff, so it's all good. But, but, um, so I, there's some things about this book I really liked because it's very like fast paced, I think, like it's mostly action like there's mostly stuff going on like action scenes action driven which I think my work kind of is similar to that so I think in terms of pacing it was like really comfortable for me and I, I liked how it went quickly and it was easy to read quickly like the chapters themselves like I found myself reading like two chapters at a time most nights um which normally I'm like a one chapter to bed kind of girl um so yeah that was that um the I'm sorry, I'm like reading through my Goodreads too while I'm on this. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there wasn't any filler in the book, which I think people like. There's some people who really like filler. Like, again, it's more like anime terminology, I guess. But like, um, some people love filler episodes. Some people don't. I only like them if they add like a lot of degree of cuteness to the story. But other than that, we don't need them, right? And this book really doesn't have any filter. Um, and for me, it read a little bit more like an RPG type campaign than it did like a book necessarily. But again, that's just like my opinion. Um, the only things that I think like could be seen as negatives or like things that I think made it a little bit more difficult of their experience is that, um, there was a lot of char characters in this book and sometimes it was difficult to tell like who is who and their relationship to each other. Um, just because the way the book is structured, it's like, it follows four families throughout the span of like a hundred or so years. And, um, it's like installing different generations. So sometimes it, I found myself thinking that certain characters sounded similar and maybe that was purposeful to show that they were in the same families. Um, but in, for me about maybe half the characters really stood out or like were memorable in some sort of way. Um, others kind of like fell by the wayside, unfortunately. 
Um, so, like, for me, like, I think I would have kind of cut out some of the decades or whatever and maybe just focused on a couple of them and, like, really built that up instead. Um, but I understand why they did what they did. They wanted to include, like, a new relic or a new device, like, every single generation. Um, so, yeah, I get it. Um, this really, for me, kind of reminded me of the show Fear Street that was written by, like, R.L. Stein. Um, with the idea that this curse has been around for like generations and I like that show so if you kind of like that show you'll probably like this book because it's like a very similar um, similar like theme I guess um, so yeah those are like the five things I read um, this month uh, of January 2023 so in terms of like like projections for February um, let's see I have so I have like a cue list. Let me pull it up. Sorry. I'm like looking at my Goodreads right now on my computer. Um, so I have, I don't, if I have a picture, I'll put it up here, but I have a new book, book cart as like an end table in our living room and all of my to be read books are there. Douglas has his shelf and I have mine. Um, so we have like a to be read shelf, um, in addition to the Kindle. So I think the next one I'm probably going to start is actually a nonfiction book called Memoirs. Um, and only because it was very similar to like my thesis when I was in graduate school. So it's interesting to see all these books and publications out coming out now, um, as opposed to like when I was in school and I was like working on these concepts and everyone told me that like this would be hard to research or this was like a silly topic and now it's actually like academic dis discourse. So um, I'm planning on finishing that up and like sending that to my old professor, especially before like um, we move from Boston or whatever. So that's on my next up to read. There's one that I've been continuously working on, but honestly, it's like hard for me to finish because um, <laughs> it's a little triggering, not gonna lie, but it's called The Body Keeps Score and it is a book about like trauma's effects on the physical body. Um, so I have been putting that off forever. That was recommended by my therapist literally when we started therapy. Um, so yes, those two are like nonfiction books that I really need to get through. And um, there's more fiction books. Like I need to get through to, I think it's called To Eat Their Own. Um, just an indie author on Instagram sent it to me. I will definitely get into that now that I have a better device for reading PDFs and like e-files and stuff. Um, so yeah, those are, those are my three for next month. I'll keep you guys posted for anything else that might be coming up in the near future. Um, but until then, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.